Praise God. Is anybody saved today? Has anybody been baptized in Jesus' name? Well, forgive my voice, but I still got the power inside. Hallelujah. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Is anybody happy to be in the house? Is anybody happy for the glory of God? Glory, hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. This is a good day. This is a good day. Thank God I've been blood washed. Amen. Spirit filled. Jesus' name baptized. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Again, we want to welcome all of you that are here this morning. Our guest, this hand is for you. Thank you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Amen. This has been a great weekend, hasn't it? Amen. Didn't our quizzes do a great job yesterday? Yeah. Somebody asked me this morning, who were you pulling for yesterday? I told Pastor, I'm going to get a T-shirt. Apostolic Temple on one side and Calvary on the other. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to tell you, they all deserve a great big hand applause. Thank God. Amen. 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 We want to receive the offering and tithe in a few minutes, but remember service this evening begins at 6 o'clock, prayer at 515. 
Amen. Come expecting a great time in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Aren't you glad for what God's been doing at Calvary? <laughs> Hallelujah. Our pastor's going to be preaching in a few minutes. We thank God for the man of God. Amen. His family, praise the Lord. Amen. Bring our tithe and offerings unto the Lord. The ushers are coming, and uh, we want to give unto the Lord with a joyful spirit. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. to that day. Hallelujah. Why don't we just give the Lord praise today? Why don't somebody just make a little noise? Why don't you open your mouth today? Hallelujah. Lord, we are thankful for the hope that we have in you today. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Well, it feels good to be in church on a Sunday morning. And uh, it's just so uh, what a blessing it is to be able to come together uh, with uh, all of our brothers and sisters and uh, to be with our friends and family, the people of God. And uh, I, Lord, what a beautiful Sunday morning it is. The sun is shining and uh, the weather is just perfect. And I could not, uh, I couldn't think of anything I'd rather be doing with my time on a Sunday morning and being in the house of God. 
Amen. We're glad to see everybody here today. We're glad for all of our guests. Look back and see the Borel family coming in. We love the Borel family and uh, everybody that's taking time to come today. I, uh, if you have your Bible this morning, turn with me to the book of Judges, chapter 16, and uh, beginning at verse 4. Um, while you're turning there, I, I want to say again how thankful I am for everybody here from this local church that came yesterday as well as other days last week and helped with the Bible quizzing tournament. Uh, what a great time we had. This place was full of uh, kids and parents and coaches from all over uh, this uh, region here. Uh, Bible quizzing, we, we, had a, we had a great time. We used every nook and cranny of this property to get it done, too. <laughs> and uh, uh, Brother, Brother Borrell, he, we were talking yesterday, and he said, uh, we beat y'all. <laughs> I was like, hold on a minute. What do you mean, we beat y'all? <laughs> I was like, this is your church, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, what happens is when it's your grandkids, it don't matter what church it is, it becomes we beat y'all. So I got it figured out. Uh, but anyway, we, but we, no, y'all beat us twice. What in the world? Well, hallelujah. But uh, they, uh, they did a great job, all of them. Judges chapter 16 and verse 4. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came un up unto her. And said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth. And wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. I, uh, I want to preach this morning from this subject. Where does our great strength lie? Where does our great strength lie? Amen. Why don't we lift our hands and ask the Lord to talk to us today. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time together. I ask that you will anoint me. Lord, let my words be pleasing to you today. Lord, let my words be acceptable in your sight. God, I want to say what you want me to say. Lord, let, let my words bring life and let them be anointed today. Let it accomplish what it was sent for it to accomplish. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for standing this morning. You can be seated. Samson was a judge in Israel. And he was a man who was mightily used of God. The thing that is most known about Samson, when we think of Samson, was his very great strength. He was a man of uh, superhuman strength. One time, Samson, he defeated 1,000 Philistine soldiers using the jaw of a donkey bone that he had found. Uh, it, he didn't use a sword or any great weapon, but just a, a bone. And he defeated a thousand men that were coming against him. Another time, Samson, he ripped the gates off of the city, off of its hinges. And then he carried them up the hill into the city. These gates would have been massive gates made for uh, the, the ability to for anything that even large to pass through the gates. And Samson, uh, these gates were made to withstand the attack of armies. But yet Samson by himself uh, pulled those gates off and went into the city. Because of his great strength and the threat that he posed to the enemy... The Philistines, they tried everything they could to defeat him and find the source of his power. 
The Bible tells us that he fell in love with a woman by the name of Delilah, who was a daughter of a Philistine. She began to entice him, to lure him, and ask him where the source of his strength and his great power lied. Because they just could not understand how this man could have the strength that he had. The fact that they were so perplexed by his, his great strength and where was it coming from. This shows us that Samson was not a Hercules type of a man. We see uh, pictures depicting Samson a lot of times. He's a big massive man. And he's ripped and got muscles everywhere. And uh, as though he was some uh, giant of a man. But this would indicate to us that he was not that way. If he was some massive eight and a half foot tall man with muscles everywhere, they wouldn't be trying so hard to figure out where his strength was lying. But it shows us that he was just an average man like you and I. Well, I guess I won't bring you into it, but... But he's just an average man like me. However, uh, we see several instances in Scripture where the Spirit of the Lord would come upon Samson. His strength didn't lie in lifting weights or physical training or finite things or his intellect or skill. But the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord would come upon Samson. Hallelujah. Hey, what a wonderful thing it is if we could ever get the Spirit of the Lord to come upon us and empower us to do what we could not do on our own. The Bible shows us that the Lord didn't just fall on Samson randomly. God didn't just pick a, a random person for, uh, to anoint and to use, but there was a reason that God would move on him and give him great strength. The Bible tells us that Samson's strength and the Spirit of the Lord coming upon him, it was the result of a Nazarite vow that Samson had made unto God. If you look up what a Nazarite vow is, you'll find that it is a vow that is taken by individuals who have voluntarily decided to dedicate themselves to God. This vow is a decision. It's an action. It's a desire on the part of the people to yield themselves to God completely. By definition, the Hebrew word Nazir simply means to be separated or to be consecrated. So that's where that word Nazarite comes from. It means to be separated or to be consecrated. So the Nazarite vow, which appears in number 6, chapter 1 through 21, there's, there's five uh, things, uh, features about this vow. Number one, it's voluntary. It can be done by either men or women. It has a specific time frame. It has specific requirements and restriction. And its conclusion, a sacrifice is offered. Samson had made a commitment to God that he would separate himself and consecrate himself unto God. And his time frame for doing so was his entire life. Samson made a commitment that for the rest of my life, I'm going to separate myself unto the use of God. And I'm going to consecrate myself for the purpose of God. And he didn't, uh, he, he made up his mind, I'm not going to go where everybody else goes. And I'm not going to drink what everybody else drinks. He didn't uh, uh, do what everyone else did. And he didn't even do his hair like everyone else did their hair. Because it was every part of him, every part of his life was committed to God. There were some things that he would not touch as a result of the vow. I want to... Stress it again that Samson did not get his strength through his intellect or through earthly means. But he got it because of his holiness and his commitment to God. Several times we see where Samson would tell Delilah, 
that his secret strength was found in other things. And that if the, these things would happen, that he would be like other men. One example was if he would be bound by new ropes, he would just be like other men. But we, under, uh, we can look at that and know that Samson understood that without his consecration, that he would just be weak like other men. He would uh, be, be normal like other men. He would be in the same condition as those that, who did not have the strength of God in his life. And so all, all of these things about Samson that we see in his life and in the Old Testament is uh, written to us for our learning. The Bible says everything written aforetime was written for our learning and so that we can apply it to our own lives. Because just like Samson, just like Samson, we have found the secret to supernatural strength. Just like Samson, we have found the secret to having strength and power that is outside of ourselves, that's not within uh, my humanity, and it's not within my flesh, but it is in God himself, and it's in the power of God that rests upon us. I'm telling you that we as Holy Ghost-filled apostolic people, we have found access to superhuman strength that other men and women do not have. We've got something that the world does not have. We have something that gives us a strength that the world does not have. Uh, the, the world, they have to face life uh, as other men do. But I'm going to tell you, we do not face life as other men and other women do because we've got the strength uh, and the power of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us. I'm telling you that the Holy Ghost uh, will fall on the people of God uh, and empower you to do things uh, that you could not have done in your own intellect uh, and in your own human strength. Uh, hallelujah. We've got the strength to break down the gates of hell. We've got the strength uh, so that the gates of hell cannot prevail against us. Uh, the defenses of hell are not strong enough to withstand uh, a Holy Ghost-filled, uh, blood-bought, consecrated child of God. Hallelujah. Hey, I want to remind you today that we've got the strength to defeat the enemy of our souls uh, with weapons that are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, amen. Otherwise, we would be inadequate for the job, uh, but we got something that makes us more than adequate, more than conquerors. Uh, I'm telling you, we've got the power that the world, uh, that religion, uh, that they do not have. Uh, we got God living on the inside of us. Uh, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Just like Samson, our strength lies in our separation from the world and our holiness unto God. The word holiness could, could most easily be understood by wholeness. Wholeness. It's holiness means that we are complete. It means that we are whole. It means that we're not, we're not lacking anything. We're not missing anything. We, we've not allowed the enemy to take something away from us that doesn't belong to him. And that belongs to us. Wholeness is where we are complete in every area of our lives. That we are healthy. And we are healthy spiritually. And physically and mentally and in our, in our relationships. That's what holy, holiness is. Holiness is not just, uh, it's, it's not just only the way that we dress. But God, he, uh, his desire is that we have wholeness in every aspect of our lives. And just like Samson, we have voluntarily made a vow to God. That there's just some things that we're not going to do. There's just some things that we're just not going to participate in. Hallelujah. And nobody's making me do it. This is how I want to live. 
Like the old song says, I choose to be a Christian. I choose to be like him. Nobody's making me do it. This is how I want to live. You decide for you, and I'll decide for me. But as for me and my house, we're going to be holy unto the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to be whole and complete. Hey, I don't want to be a part of the world because the world's on its way down. I don't want to be linked up with the world that's on its way to hell. But I want to grab a hold of the church because the church is on its way up, brothers and sisters. Hey, you're a part of something that's thriving. You're a part of something that's predestined to win. You're a part of something that shall not be defeated. Hallelujah. There's just some things we're not going to watch. They just, come on up here, Brother Waggis back. We got a seat for you. There's just some things we're not going to look at. There's just some things that we're not going to drink because it's what the world drinks. Because we want the strength that comes from God. Hallelujah. Hey, I cannot do life without the strength of God. I can't do anything without his strength. Amen. Hey, I would be defeated. I would be, I, I, I would, I, I would be uh, ruled by the enemy. Uh, and, and I would be afflicted by the enemy uh, if it were not for the strength of God. And I, I've, I've come to tell you today uh, that you don't have to be afflicted by the enemy. Uh, you don't have to uh, be the beneath and be on the bottom uh, of life and, and, and be bound by the enemy. Uh, but you can be free. Uh, you can be, have liberty. Uh, you can have dominion uh, that God has, has promised to us. Hallelujah. Hey, I want to I wanna inspire somebody today. I want to encourage somebody today. Uh, that you can be the head and not the tail. You can be the envy of the nations. Your neighbor ought to look at you and be jealous of you because of what you caught. The Bible says that the people of God were the envy of the nations. And that's the plan of God for this church and for every person under the sound of my If you're hearing this 10 years from now, it's for you too. I want to tell somebody... Amen, that we are the head and not the tail. We are royal people. We got the blood of the king flowing in our veins. I refuse to accept anything less than living my life with the strength of God on my soul. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Your bodies. A living sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service. It's not unreasonable. It's very reasonable. We're serving a reasonable God. Amen. Paul would go on to say, be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. If there has ever been a time where we should heed the verse, here, be not conformed to the world. It is today. Hallelujah. I, I refuse to let the world put pressure on me and tell me what a complete and whole human being should look like. The world, they don't even know what a man or a woman should look like. They don't even know what bathroom to use. I'm not going to be intimidated by Hollywood and by society and by the mindset of carnal, worldly, ungodly people. But instead, uh, I'm going to be transformed uh, by the renewing of my mind. Uh, I, I want to follow what the Word of God says for how my life should be because I was created in the image of God and God knows who I, who I am and God knows what I was meant to be. Uh, hey, can I tell you, government doesn't know what's best for our marriages. Uh, government doesn't know what's best. Uh, hey, Hollywood doesn't know how we should dress. Uh, 
Hollywood doesn't know how a marriage should be. And so you know what I do to find all that out? I go to the word of God and I say, God, transform me. Hey, you know, there's too many people. They're trying to change the word of God to fit the world. But what we should be doing is we should be trying to change the world and to change our lives to fit the word of God. Hey, God, transform me into your image. God, transform me into your likeness. Transform me into what your word says for my life. Oh, let's give the Lord praise together today. Oh, come on, let's love the Lord all over this house. Hallelujah. Are you thankful for the word of the Lord today? Amen. 2 Timothy 1.9 says, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? It's a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. 1 Peter 1 and 13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former Lust in your ignorance. Before we came to God, before we had the revelation of the word of God in Jesus Christ, we were ignorant. And we, we followed our former lust. But he is saying, don't fashion yourself according to how you used to be. Don't pattern yourself after how life was for you and the things that you used to do. Because when we come to God and we repent of our sins and we're baptized in the name of Jesus, we are new creatures. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. And he says, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That's an old English word for lifestyle. Be holy in all manner of lifestyle. Whatever you're doing in your life, in all manner of things that you do, be holy. And here is the reason, because it's written, be ye holy, for I am holy. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. That's the key to our power and our strength. Amen. It's this right here. He said, because I'll dwell in them, and I'll walk in them, and I will be their God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they shall be my people. Hey, hey, imagine with me. Imagine with me walking through life and the journey of life. Uh, but it's not just you walking. God is walking in you. Hallelujah. It's God that's leading your footsteps uh, and guiding your path. Uh, you can't get any better than that, brothers and sisters. Uh, you can't get any more power than that. Uh, when God's on the inside uh, and God's leading you where to walk uh, and God's leading you where to go and what to do uh, and God's leading your actions uh, and God, he's touching your mind. I, hey, I'm telling you, that's what sets us above. Uh, that's what gives us the advantage over the world uh, is we got God living on the inside of us. And then it says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Hey, not Pastor Adams, uh, but saith the Lord uh, and touch not the unclean thing uh, and I will receive you uh, and I'll be a father unto you uh, and ye shall be my sons and daughters. Uh, saith the Lord Almighty. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, we got a new father. Uh, we're a part of a new family. Uh, it's because we're not touching the unclean thing. Uh, it's because we come out from among them. Uh, 
we're separated, we're holy. We don't look at what the world looks at. We don't eat what they eat. We don't drink what they drink. But we have been consecrated. I'm telling you, we got power. We got power. We got power. We got power over hell. We got power over spirits. We got power over our flesh. Our strength doesn't not come. It does not come because we dance and because we lift up hands, our hands in church. But rather, it's because we lift up holy hands in church. To the untrained carnal eye, lifting up hands looks the same. Wherever you go, that people lift up their hands. But people lift up their hands everywhere. There's people everywhere in churches of all different denominations and faiths and consecration levels that are lifting up their hands in church. Did you know that there are people who are lost and in darkness who dance in church and they praise God in church, but yet they have no power. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They lift their hands, and they can dance, and they can sing as good as anybody, but they don't have the power. Hallelujah. And and, and, and and, and a lot of people, they come into our church services, and it's kind of like Delilah. They marvel and they're amazed at the power that is in this house uh, and the strength that they feel. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, uh, it's not It's not because we're just lifting up our hands. Uh, but it's because uh, on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, we're keeping our hands clean and pure. And we're keeping our hearts separated uh, and, and pulled out of the world. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help us today. Uh, our strength. Strength, uh, it comes uh, from denying our flesh uh, and walking contrary to the desires uh, and the will of our humanity uh, and turning our backs uh, on the lust of the world. Uh, you know where our strength comes from? Uh, it comes from taking our flesh by the nap of the neck uh, and saying, flesh, uh, you're going to do it whether you like it or not. Uh, you're going to church whether you want to or not. Uh, you're going to pray whether you think you need to or not. Uh, because because first you're not in the driver's seat. But I, I'm letting the Lord walk in me. I'm letting the Spirit of God direct my path. Oh, I think somebody will just open your mouth today and give God a great praise. I think somebody will throw your head back and shout. Hey, it'll be a good day for somebody to make up your mind. I'm going to live according to the word. I'm going to do this thing. I want the power. Come on, let's love him right now. Come on, everybody in this house, let's worship the Lord right now. Hey, can you lift your hands? Come on, if you got hands, why don't you lift up holy hands? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our strength comes from doing the things that our flesh does not want to do. It comes from crucifying our pride and our desires. There's something happens when you break the, the will of your flesh. The, the beautiful fragrance on the inside of that alabaster box can begin to flow. The spirit of God can begin to flow when you break the things that are holding it back. Our strength comes from loving when we don't want to love. Forgiving when we don't want to forgive. Giving when we don't want to give. And serving God and others when we would rather be served. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, you know, there, you, you get power by showing up to work night. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Especially when your flesh doesn't want to. You get strength. Oh, Lord. Hey, I know I'm preaching good now. Amen. I, a new commandment I have just given you, I feel like. Oh, uh, yeah. Devil, you're a liar. Devil, you're a liar. You get, hey, there's something that happens any time you break down your flesh. Uh, any time you deny your flesh uh, and say, God, not my will, uh, but I'm, I'm going to conform to the church. Uh, I'm going to conform to the word of God. Hallelujah. Hey, not my will, but thy will be done. Uh, there's something about it when you just take that cup uh, and you say, I'm going to drink it. Uh, I'm going to do the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. That is where the, uh, the secret is to our great strength. It is in weakness. It's in our flesh being crucified. Most godly, therefore, will I rather glory in mine infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. What Paul was saying is when, I, when my flesh has been subdued, when my will has been weakened and when my when my uh, desires have been crucified hallelujah then am i strong then is the power of god resting upon me then am i strong if you can ever crucify your flesh then you'll have the strength that you need to love your spouse hallelujah if you could ever crucify your flesh, Lord, it's getting really good in here now. Hallelujah. If you could, if you could just crucify your flesh, you would get the strength that you need to love your brother and to love your sister. Hallelujah. How can you love them? I, I tell you why. Because when I think about what a wretched sinner I was uh, and what the Lord did for me, it just has something, a way of taking away the pride uh, that and the stubbornness in me uh, that says, oh, you, you, you know, you, they, they don't deserve the love. Hey, you didn't deserve the love of God either, friend. Uh, amen. But you deserve judgment. Uh, you, we all deserved hell. But by the grace and mercy of God, uh, he showed love to us. Uh, oh, God. God help us today. Hey, I want to tell you, the world wants our strength today. The enemy of our souls wants the power that we have. Delilah wanted to know the secret to Samson's strength because he, she wanted to afflict him. She even told him the reason. It's so, so that you can be afflicted. And, and multiple times, Samson would lie to Delilah and, and tell her where his strength lied. Out of self-preservation. And, you know, we're living in a world where the, the prophets of God are still doing the same thing. They are they're lying to people about where the source of strength is. They're lying to people about where, where does it really come from. And it's because of self-preservation. It's because of a love for themselves. Hallelujah. But I, I pray that in the world of grace, where even Delilah could have, have, have the strength that we have, I pray that when somebody would ask me, where does your strength lie? I pray that I could tell him the truth. Uh, I pray that I could tell him, uh, hallelujah, it's because uh, I made a consecration unto God. And I don't live the way that the world lives. Uh, 
Oh, God, help us today. Uh, the spirit of, of our world, uh, the enemy is trying to pressure us, uh, trying to pressure the people of God, uh, trying to pressure the preachers and the prophets of God uh, and the judges in Israel to give up their source of strength, uh, to give up their source of power because he wants to afflict us. Uh, he wants you to be in bondage. Uh, he wants to afflict you day in and day out. Uh, he wants to afflict you when you go to bed at night. Uh, he wants to afflict you in your business and in your body. He wants to afflict you in your family and in your marriage. But I come to preach to you today that we got a source of strength that can break out everything that would try to bind us. We got we know what the source of power is. It's our holiness unto God. It's our vow that we're not gonna sin. It's our vow that we're gonna keep ourselves spotless from the world. I want to encourage somebody that's bound and afflicted him today. Amen. God, give your life to God. Come out of sin. Stop looking at the trash on the internet. Stop going to the places you're going. Stop having fellowship with people in the world and watch as you have strength to break the chains that are trying to bind you and hold you back. I'm not, give, I'm not interested in giving up my source of strength. I'm not interested and being deceived by the devil's enticements and temptations. That it would be safe to just give up one little part of my separation from the world. Or one part of my commitment to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, devil, you can't have it. Hey, man, devil, you can't have what we have. Hallelujah. Delilah, you're not going to entice us. Amen. We got, we got the power. We got the Holy Ghost living on the inside. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, yes. Hey, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. There's just power that comes uh, when people say, I'm not going to go to the ball games because that's where the world goes to church. There's some, a power that comes when we say, I'm not going to go to the world's parties. I don't participate in things that are contrary to the life that I'm committed to live in God. The Bible says the day will come. They'll worship the creature more than the creator. Hey, I'm not going to worship a football star. I'm not going to stomp the preachers for a football player. I'm not going to lift my hands for a rock star singer. I'm not going to shout and dance for a country and western singer. I'm not going to cry over a Hollywood star but instead I'm going to do it for Jesus. I'm worshiping the creator. He is the one that delivered me. He's the one that set me free. I don't go to worldly concerts. I don't have fellowship and agreement with carnal people. I don't go to churches where they don't preach truth. I don't listen to preachers that don't preach the truth because 1 John 2.15 says love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of the life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Come on, church. Come out of the world. Come out, church. Amen. Separate yourself. It's time to consecrate ourselves. It's time to be holy unto God. Get your, get your head out of the trash on the internet. Get the television out of your house. Make up your mind. I'm going to live for God. Hey, we're best. We got the power. We know where the strength of God is. Oh, let's lift our hands and give him praise right now. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Oh, come on, somebody open up your mouth. Yay! Hallelujah! Yay! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Psalm 101 verse 2 says, then come to the music. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. A froward heart shall not depart from me. I will not know 
or be intimately close to a wicked person. You cannot be entertained by sin and worldliness and have the strength of God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I'm going to tell you, you cannot have the world and joy. It's one or the other. God's looking for people who walk in their house with an upright heart, in their own house. Hallelujah. The, the voice, a man, the voice of a television show family guy, when they passed homosexual marriage into law, he said that the battle for gay marriage was won through the entertainment media. He said because people were having breakfast every morning with homosexuals via television. And they were growing to love these people and therefore became more accepting of them. Hallelujah. I am going to tell you, when, when there, there's places on the Internet and in Hollywood where you step onto the battleground of the enemy and you have no strength when you do so. You've stepped on their battleground and they're fighting for your strength. And they're fighting for your consecrations. They're fighting for your knowledge of what a marriage should look like. They're trying to distort your image and your perception of what a life should be. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you got to come out of that. Uh, you got to make up in your mind and say, I'm, uh, I'm committed. Uh, I'm dedicated. Uh, hallelujah. I don't dress the way the world dresses. Uh, long before the world was confused about their gender and which bathroom to use, uh, I was dressing like a man and my wife was dressing like a lady. Hey, hey, for a long time, the church has been displaying to the world that there is a difference between a man and a woman uh, and that there's two genders. Uh, we were created in the image of God, and we are called to show forth his image in male and female. Amen. Our women don't wear pants, and our men don't wear dresses because Deuteronomy 22, 5 says, amen, that a woman should not put on that which pertaineth to a man, and a man should not put on that which pertaineth to a woman. Our women do, do not cut their hair because it's their glory. Our men, they do cut their hair because the Bible says uh, that it's a shame for a man to have long hair. Hey, I keep my face clean shaven uh, because it's the tradition in the apostolic church uh, that we're going to be separated from the world. Uh, we're not going to be associated with the hipsters uh, in the hippie movement, which by definition is the rebels, uh, the rebellious of society. Uh, no, we're not rebellious, uh, but we are as obedient children, uh, and we are fast in the likeness of God. Oh, God, help us. Hey, we're keeping the traditions among us. We're going to walk holy and separated. Hey, I'm, I'm not trying to maintain my ego, but I'm trying to squash my ego because my ego will suppress the spirit of God moving in my heart. Hallelujah. 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 First Corinthians 3.16, as they began to play, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, is to be whole and complete. Which temple ye are? Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in the world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. The wisest in our society, their wisdom is foolishness unto God. Because they have no idea. They have no idea what wholeness is. They don't even know what a whole man should look like. They don't know what a whole complete woman should look like. And that's the reason they've lost their way. And, and, and there's, there, there will be no end to the confusion. You think the world's confused now, it's just going to get more confused. Because they've, they've got no compass to give them direction. 
And the word defile here means to alter in any way. He said, no, you're not, that you're the temple of God. The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And if any man defile or alter the temple of God in any way, him shall God destroy. Hallelujah. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And he made us whole and complete the, the way we are. That's why we don't alter it. That's why, why we don't dye our hair. So, some of you are wondering, where, where is the source of strength? And I, and I want to give you the answer today. It's, it's because we don't alter the temple. We don't dye our hair. We, we don't pierce our bodies. We don't alter the temple of God. We don't, we don't put makeup on our body. Hey, we don't need makeup. Why? What, what are we needing to make up? We got the real thing. Amen. We, why do we need to give ourselves the appearance of life when we got the real life on the inside of us? The only thing you paint up is something that's dead. But we're not dead. We're lively stones. Hallelujah. We've been resurrected by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We don't need mascara. We don't need to mask what's going on on the inside. But we want to let what's going on on the inside shine forth to the world. So that they can see what's in us. Hallelujah. We don't, we don't mark our body and we don't tattoo our body. Because the Bible says any man that defiled the body of God will be destroyed. If you if you got a tattoo already before you came into the world, then be proud of it. And let it be a mark of where God brought you from. But but Lord, when you come into the church and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, you don't need to mark and alter your body. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God help us today. The Bible says we don't wear ornaments but on the outside. But instead, let, let it be the ornament of the heart of a meek and a quiet spirit. Let, let, let the jewels be on the inside. It was God's intention that the treasure be on the inside. Hallelujah. When, when uh, Moses came down off that mountain and he saw those, he, he saw the, those people dance around those golden calves and they'd taken off their earrings and, and their rings and all of the jewelry because all of those things came out of Egypt. All of those things, their source is the life that we left behind. That's where it came from. And they, they put it into a golden calf, and they were worshiping around that. Moses, he took that golden calf, and he, calf and he, he br uh, crushed it into powder, and he spread it on the water. And then he had him drink that water with all those jewels crushed up in that water. And so what they were wearing on the outside was now on the inside. And it was a beautiful type of what was going to happen when the Holy Ghost came. Hallelujah. And something got down on the inside. And we don't need it on the outside anymore. Because we're reflecting the light of God from the inside of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, aren't you thankful today for the word of God? Aren't you thankful today that we're not, amen, going the direction of the world? Aren't you thankful today to know that we are a peculiar people, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood? Hey, I don't want to give up the life that God's blessed me with. Hey, I'm still thankful. Hey, I love, there's just something in me. I love it from the core of my soul. I love this holiness way. I love this separated way. I love it that my wife, when she gets a skirt that's got a split in it, and she brings it to her sewing machine, and she sews it up because she said, I'm different. I'm not like the world. I'm separated from the world. I'm, a, I'm wearing the adornment of a meek and a quiet spirit. <laughs> well, why don't we stand today and lift our hands? Amen. <laughs> I'm preaching to somebody today 
Don't ever let Delilah entice us. We're never going to let Delilah entice us so that she can find our source of strength so she can afflict us. But I don't know about you, but I, I want to stay free. I want to stay consecrated unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house so strong. Amen. I wonder if we can join with somebody. Can you, if it's appropriate, join with somebody close to you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, why don't you join with somebody? Here's, here's your chance right now to fellowship with Jesus in his sufferings. Crucify your flesh today. Crucify your pride. And say, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. God, I'm not going to fashion myself after my former lifestyle. But, Lord, I'm going to fashion myself after my future lifestyle and what you have for me. Uh, I want to encourage some new converts. Uh, don't pattern yourself after your old life because uh, that's what got you in trouble. That's what got you afflicted. Uh, but fashion yourself according to the word of God. Uh, well, I, I want to encourage you. Why don't you take a step forward today? Uh, why don't you take a step closer to God? Uh, why don't you come a little bit farther from the world? Uh, why don't you get a little farther from the unclean thing why don't you make up your mind today I'm going to put more distance between myself and the enemy that's trying to think me it's where the blessings come from brother it's where the spirit of the Lord can come upon you and anoint you Come on, that's it. Open your mouth. Come on, God. He, God likes what he hears right now. Hallelujah. Hey, do you hear that sound in this house? That's the sound of consecration. That's the sound of people giving themselves to the Lord. That sound you hear is people that are tired of being enticed by Delilah. That are saying, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. You're hearing the sound of people that say, I'm walking in the blessings of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, brothers. Why don't you find another brother to join with today? Hallelujah. There's strength in our unity. Why don't you, sisters, why don't you find a sister to encourage today? Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Yeah. Lord. Lord, we want that strength on us like never before lord we want your spirit to come upon us like never before god help us to be a witness in this dark world god help us to be an example for those that are lost and confused god God, I give you everything. God, I give you all of me. God, I give you everything. I want more power. If you need more strength, then increase your consecration today. If you need more power in your family and your life, then increase your commitment to God. 